The music started, and when I tell it, I still have my hair popping up. Everything, the silhouettes he showed, the way he was presenting his concept of using whatever to make fashion. Plastic hoods, ropes, everything could be fashion. He showed that clear. The kids started walking with the models because they loved it so much, and everybody made it happen. At the end of the 17 minutes of that the show lasted, we knew we had lived the moment of Matteo Magella. Martin Margiela is different from the others because he has not weakened his point of view. He has imposed a look. He has concentrated on a way to discuss the format of mode, the system of mode. Il n'a pas, pas fait qu'introduire des nouveaux vêtements. Il l'a fait. Mais en plus, il a recommandé le système de la mode qui était déjà très largement perverti et très largement dominé par l'argent. There was a tradition in Antwerp of creativity. The Antwerp Fashion Academy was the first fashion academy in Antwerp. All these young students, they saw it as their only opportunity to study fashion in that time. The The Antwerp Six was like an informal group of friends. Martin was not part of that informal group, but we call him the seventh member because his history is so much interwoven um, with their history because they studied together at the fashion department of the Antwerp Academy. They were the first generation that broke through on an international level, end of the 80s. It was a moment, it was the first moment people thought that Belgium could possibly produce anything. It was the moment that Antwerp became important. I uh, saw Martin, which was very tall. At that time, I was impressed because he was very tall. On his work, look at me, uh, the sketches I saw, everything, I think it's interesting, it's nice. But let's say that I saw everything, and I was more shocked at the beginning by what I saw. I knew that he could do something great, but I didn't imagine at which point it should be great. It was fab. I was not uh, his teacher because he didn't need any teacher. Okay, cool. It was like we were like totally obsessed by clothes. He knew he, ha he was going to do something with clothes, that was for sure. We went to uh, like flea markets, like you say in English. The only thing, we bought clothes and clothes and clothes. When we went to Paris, like even when he was not on the academy, it was like we, we bought like only clothes. And in the evening, it was like putting everything on the bed and we didn't eat. That was, it was a kind of an obsession. I met his mother a few times. One day she was explaining to me, you know what I like to do so much and I do it, she says, is um, I buy furniture second hand and then I change it. I, 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 I repaint it, I, I, I uh, put it together differently and so on. And without saying a word, I thought, uh, my God, this is exactly what your son is doing with the garments. He was bringing a, a new collection based on deconstructing and reconstructing fashion, so rich as, as a concept. He wasn't the first to do deconstruction, but he somehow was the first person to really make it believable, partly because I think his cutting is so exceptional. The way that he cut clothes, the way that he shaped things to the body was very well done. You know, anybody can take a sheet and tear it up, but it doesn't necessarily make a great garment. 
he had a real way of doing things which made the clothes unique. Every show was different and every show was going to the balls, as we can say. It was really going very deep. It was fashion in its most honest form. There was such a stampede to get in that people were worried for their lives. Everybody wanted to be in. Everybody wanted to be there. And there was hysteria in fashion. Cover the face, you're forcing a professional public to look at the clothes in a professional way. Look at the clothes and not who's wearing them. But he was against the idea of the glam model in any shape or form. And he deliberately used not awkward people exactly, but for the men's shows and the women's, people who had not a typical form or figure or face, and certainly not hairstyle. Nine out of ten times, if there was a black line over the eyes in the lookbook, it's because if it wasn't, we couldn't pay the rights for the models. We didn't have the money. But never was he going to be able to compete by having who, Kate Moss, whatever, if he wanted them. And so he was presenting clothes without a model's persona. He didn't want to give importance to the faces. The importance was the, the collection, the garments he was showing, the fashion he was showing. And I think also that reflecting on his own uh, obscurity, that it, it, it played a role also. As he saw his colleagues in the industry become over increasingly mediatized, I think he, he saw that his anonymity is a, a real advantage to his day-to-day -day life, that he doesn't have that added pressure of people sort of coming up to him or having to sort of feed that beast, as it were. And I think also the fact that he worked with Gautier for three years, who has got incredible verve and gusto to do that type of thing, I think that also was uh, an incredible sort of an apprenticeship for him and, and, and knowing that it's a double-edged sword. It's pretty smart to be the greeter Garbo of fashion. And by not showing his identity, I think that Martin Margiela became more exciting. People wondered what he was like. There was a mystery that surrounded him. <laughs> I think that Martin Margiela has posed a statue very particular in the history of mode. Euh, en ce sens, qu'il a succédé à une ère de starification des créateurs de mode. Euh, et il a fait de l'anonymat un outil de communication. Chaque couturier doit savoir que lorsqu'on a travaillé 10, 20, 30, 40 ans, c'est un grand moment, c'est une grande période. C'est un travail dur de faire de la mode, c'est beaucoup de collections, c'est beaucoup de saisons. Qu'il y a un moment donné, peut-être pour protéger ce travail, il vaut mieux arrêter. Martin said what he needed to say. And I personally think that it's ultimately admirable when a person knows that he or she said what they had to say and basta. It's what more people should do.
surpris que les jeunes créateurs aujourd'hui ne soient pas plus envieux de cet itinéraire-là. Il a montré qu'on pouvait, qu pouvait faire des choses avec rien, d'une certaine manière. Et ça, c'est très rassurant pour le monde. Il a, en ce sens, qu'il a démodé euh, tout le reste à une époque. Martin Margiela est un créateur qui a complètement retourné l'histoire de la mode à sa faveur. Et Martin Margiela est allé un peu plus loin que tous les autres en disparaissant complètement.